Warriors v. The Knights, Saturday, 405 Go Media Stadium in Auckland. Sean Johnson returns reportedly at the moment. It's looking like he'll play, but he has yet to do a full training session. I think that's going to happen day before the game. Mm -hmm. Um, The the Warriors have just updated us and said that basically he's done his own training at the moment. Everything's looking good, but he'll do his first training session with everyone later in the week. Yep. Dylan Walker moves to the bench. Freddie Lussick goes to 18th man. Knights team news. Hastings, Fitzgibbon out. Clune starts at halfback. Dylan Lucas starts at second row. Key stats. Warriors will play their first final home game at, since 2008. Knights will be playing for a club record equaling 11 consecutive wins. Knights have just have won just eight of 22 matches at Go Media Stadium. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? This is an, a very, very interesting game. Given yeah, you know, the results across the weekend, Knights, mate, Knights 10 in a row. Yeah, wow. 10 in a row. Is that the best run of any team this entire season? I think it is. Yeah. It has to be yep. 10. So, you know, for them to do that, it's it's pretty incredible. Given where they were in the in the halfway point of the year, they were nearly running last, the, the Knights, but now find themselves in week two of the finals. And the Warriors, well... I've been on the bandwagon for quite some time. I think very early in the season. I watched them live in the the Anzac Day game against Melbourne. Now, they got beat that night, but I was really impressed with what I've seen. Um, the style of footy that they played. They play, they, they're, not, they're not afraid to be quite expansive, which is probably, you know, traditionally what we expect from a Warriors footy side. But they got great skill from, from, from their front rowers all the way through to the fullback. Um, and, you know, Sean Johnson has just been on fire in the – the back up, well, the middle from the middle parts all the way to the end of the season, he's been playing great footy. The only thing about him is that ever since they had that bye, Kempi, which was about what a month before the end of the season, they just they seem like they've struggled to hit the heights that they were that they were hitting before that. Mm. Now I know they've had like a couple of sort of you know, one-off performances, particularly by some individuals like DWZ, where he comes up with some, you know, miraculous plays and Shawnee Johnson comes up with some freakish kicks or, you know, plays himself. As a team, I don't think they've been playing all that well. So coming off last week where, you know, they were completely outplayed and they were controlled by the Warriors, less Sean Johnson, of course. You know, we need to acknowledge that. Like... They've got a week to find their best footy again mm. because they're coming up against a side a lot like the Roosters, very similar situation to the Roosters where they bring they bring form and they bring confidence. And they bring in one of the guys who are, talking about form, one of the form players of the comp right now, Kalen Ponga, mm. who again was outstanding. Like you take him out of that footy side on the weekend and New, Newcastle get beaten. So um, – Interesting one for me. If if they're both if they both play their strongest game, <laughs> you know who who's the better side? Is it Warriors, particularly playing at home in front of what's going to be a pretty intimidating home crowd, um, or is it Knights? I, I I feel personally, I think I think the Warriors. If they play their best game, I think the Warriors in a really tight one. You only have to look to last week with the Knights how. Sometimes a packed out home stadium can almost go against you. If anything, it looked like it rattled the Knights a bit to begin with, yeah, and it was the yeah, Raiders that point. took energy, energy from it. So I do believe the Warriors have to find that really good balance between making it about more than rugby league. You've got a country on your back, they've gotten behind you, it's your time mm. to repay them. But mm. you don't want them running out there nervous and in awe of the situation and, and almost worried about the consequences of if they lose, you know, losing in front of a home crowd that have gotten behind them all season long. Yeah. It, it's really going to be Webster's biggest test. I know he's only a rookie coach, but geez, that's a test to be able to get yeah. that balance. It's um, it's a good point you make, Kempi, because, you know, I think, you know, when we're looking at the, the games and the matchups and all that sort of stuff, you look at the two footy sides and the skill and, you know, game plans and all that sort of stuff, you can break that down, but... I think the one thing you've got to take into consideration too is that expectation mm. that the Warriors are going to have on them. And it's not just from, it's not just from, you know, the people at the ground. It's an entire country. I know. I it's an entire country. Like, don't, not, it's not just Auckland where they're based. It is an entire country. Mm. 
Like I'm hearing over there at the moment, like it's it's like they they're calling it a movement. Yeah, wow. It's like the Warriors movement, and that there's more. Like there's a rugby World Cup going on at the moment, <laughs> right? That we hardly know about because of our NRL finals on at the moment, but they reckon there's more interest in the Warriors finals campaign than than the All Blacks right now. Wow. So that's saying something. That's incredible. Because when you think about New Zealand sport, like the first thing you think about is the All Blacks, right? Yeah. Yep. But the, but but they're saying that there's there is that much interest in the Warriors. It's it's just incredible. So, you know, for the for the Warriors players, they need to find the positive rather than the negative. Like there's absolutely no negative in that. Mm. There really isn't. Yeah. I get it. The whole country's you know, behind you, they, they want you to win, but you got to take it as, hey, like, they're with us. Mm. They believe. They've enjoyed, they've enjoyed and they they believe in, in what we're doing and what we have done all season. We need to just go out and do that now for this 80 minutes and don't worry about next week. Mm. You don't worry, like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about who we potentially could be facing or, or what happens if we play in a prelim. Don't worry about that. Just focus on this game and how do we use how do we use the momentum and the support that we've got in this country right now to get us home. And you look at the you look at the the the, the I guess the matchups. It's obviously easier said than done, but you have to find a way to take Kalen Ponger out of the game of New Zealand. If you can find a way to just rattle him early, rattle his cage early and you know, a big hit there you know, you'd almost go as far as saying, look, first good ball they get in our end, wingers, I want you jamming. Like, just target him and just come flying in and let our guys from the inside fill in behind that space that gets opened up by the winger jamming in. Mm. Because if you can null- nullify Kalen Ponga, you-, you basically nullify their attack. Yeah. Yep, you're almost... Um, you're taking away the, the, the point scoring and the creativity in their back line, really. Isn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely. What, that's, that's essentially what you are doing. Um, particularly now with like Jackson Hastings out. Mm. So he, he took a knock to that ankle that was already injured. Um, so him not being there, I think a lot more, well, more um, pressure gets heaped on Caitlin Ponga's shoulders, you know, to, to be able to run that, that attack efficiently. So this is, yeah, this is <laughs> interesting game given, given the form that the Knights are bringing in, but, you can't forget the football that the Warriors have played this year, particularly when they're at home. I think as well, from a Warriors perspective, I would be putting a lot of pressure on Marju and Young mm. to either catch the ball repeatedly, high balls just constantly to them, but also yep. when we get into good ball, let's make these guys make a mis- – not a mistake, sorry. Let's make these guys make a decision. Yeah. Because they have got a history, and so do the Warriors' back line. You know, the Warriors' edges also can be quite brittle. But Young and Marju, they've improved out of sight. They've been so good this year. But sometimes they can have a tendency to make the wrong call when it comes to making the decisions of a, of a winger. Yeah. And and looking at, like, they haven't played each other for quite some time, mm. these teams. Mm. So they play, they played each other round one over in New Zealand and then again in round six. So they, they, were, they were done and dusted by the first quarter of the season. Yeah. Um, and a lot has changed, particularly with Newcastle. Um, you know, the Warriors have been fairly consistent through throughout the entire season, but particularly for Newcastle, they're a much different side to what they were, um, you know, early days. And it's one all. Mm. It's one all this year so far. So the Warriors got, got the win in round one, and then um, Newcastle returned serve in round six, and they won by 10 points when they were playing at Newcastle. So... This is this is a great. I, I think this is going to be an unbelievable game. Um, yeah. Early start as well, Saturday um, in Australia, um, four o'clock kickoff. So make sure you've got that in your alarm in your calendar so you don't miss it. Four o'clock um, Australian time. So yeah, I'm 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 loving it. I, I'll tell you who could really make a difference, and he's I'm probably being a little bit sort of biased here, but one of my former teammates, Torhu Harris. Mm. Yeah, I thought in a losing team, he was he was pretty classy last week. Yeah, um, up against a very good defensive side, as we know in Penrith, I, I think he he provided you know something a little bit different for Penrith to look at. 
um, you know, he sort of give his his teammates a couple of little opportunities, sort of one on one, and sort of allowed them to poke their nose through and try to build a bit of momentum. I think he Newcastle will have to be on their game in the middle to be able to minimise the impact that Torhu Harris has because he's a he's a well, he's a big body himself, so he, so he's good with carrying the football, but he's very clever with his passing and his link play with his middlemen. Yeah, and when you've got guys as big as Daniel Saifidi and Jacob Saifidi, there can be a tight tendency laterally to have some mm. space around them. And if you're Tohu Harris and Adam Fenor Blake, you'd be hoping to kind of, I guess, take advantage of the space around the big boys. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely, mate. I think that's where they'll target. They they went there almost exclusively against Penrith last week. Yeah. They were just smashing him behind the ruck. So maybe that was a bit of a thing too for them, just getting themselves geared up for this finals campaign where – whether they won or lost last week, they always knew they were having another crack. So maybe look for a fair bit of their footy to be played through the middle again. Another guy I think that they've got to really spot up every time he takes a scoot is Dane Gagai. I know he had, mm. you know, the first half from hell, uh, but the second <laughs> half, you, you know, he's oh, a butterfingers. Oh mate, what's doing? <laughs> Gags, what's doing brother? Um, but, you know, earlier we spoke about the Sharkies and, like, not having these top-tier players. And I think Dan Gagai is a really good example of that because he's not necessarily playing Origin anymore, but he is a top-tier player that knows what it takes to take that next step in the big games. Yeah. And we saw that when the game was on the line. As I said, I know he had a poor first half. But in the second half, when the game was on the line and they needed someone to make some big plays, that's who stood up, Dan Gagai. Yeah. And they just, again, mate, that, that's... We go back to what we were talking about the Sharkies earlier. Like it's important to have those older heads in the side that have been a part of those big matches, and they just know certain situations. They know how to steady the ship. They know what's what needs needs to be done. And like you said, like he had a, you know, he didn't have the greatest first half, but he was able to turn around. He was able to get his thoughts together and go right. What's what what do I need to do? What do I need to go out there and do well to help my team progress through this game? Mm. And he got it done. So. Yeah, mate. Like I said, this is this is a great matchup. I I love this game. I'm so looking forward to watching this pan out. Um, and you know, I've just I've got the Warriors ahead, given Johnson's back, and they're playing at home. 